that's kind of awesome. I'm opening for Bon Jovi. Oh, obviously, Evita is my queen mother. She's the most famous. First of all, can you just tell us a bit more uh, about your show, uh, An Audience with Peter Dirk Eich? Well, you know, it's the first time I've ever not been in control. I'm very much in control, usually. I know I start in trousers and end up in a dress. However, this is a show that the audience decides on. An audience with. In other words, it's a tribute to the audience. Without them, there is no show. Without them, there's no live theatre. Um, and I was actually introduced to live theatre when I was, I think I was 13 years old. Seeing it for the first time, fell in love with it. I've been a prisoner ever since. This is life imprisonment without parole. Uh, 40 years of theatre. And the audience chooses a number. There are 16 numbers on 16 boxes. And out of each box comes a different story, different character, maybe from a different time, some 30 years ago, some three minutes ago. Um, and this show is actually a different show every night. It's entertainment. I don't want people to think that they're coming here for a lecture or a class in history. I even have a sound uh, a, a, a announcement before the show saying to people, don't switch off your cell phones, leave them alive so you can Google what you don't understand, especially people under the age of 25. It's very important that we actually know where we come from so we can really focus on where we are going. And after 19 years of democracy, I don't think one should say, you know, the past is irrelevant. The past is has a horrible habit of reinventing itself and coming back. So we've got to be very aware. And through entertainment in this way, people can laugh at their fear because most of the stories are quite chrillerach, especially ones from the past and also ones about now, about carelessness, corruption, arrogance, secrets, Indian families and aeroplanes, you know, those little bits and pieces of information. <laughs> Uh, all right, Peter, can you tell us a bit more about the project that you started, the South, South Africa's DNA? What is that all about? A few days ago, you know, I, I, I became very aware that, first of all, that the election is next year, the, the election of uh, 2014. I think the most important one in the history of our country because we have a generation of young South Africans who are not tainted by separate development or apartheid. They were born after Mandela was free, the born frees. They don't have sentiment about the past, they want the future. And then I was aware, as we all are, that we have a very strong uh, central government um, ruling party and quite a few interesting um, parties outside government who should really pool their energies together and I believe they are talking. And I suddenly thought, what would they call themselves? You know, being in the theatre, it's all very well having 12 great songs, but if you're going to have a musical, what's your title? So I thought up a title, a name, uh, an umbrella, South Africa's Democratic National Alternative. It says DNA. That's the key here, DNA, being part of South Africa's DNA. Um, uh, one or two parties have actually contacted me with interest, uh, and a few people have said, it's a very exciting uh, uh, umbrella because, again, you've got to attract people uh, because voters are very fickle sometimes and very often they say, there's nothing there for me, I'm not going to vote. I get very upset. I want people to vote. I want people to commit themselves. So the essay DNA is an interesting, and it's not from a satirist's point of view or a performer. I'm a citizen. I have the right to also suggest something and I hope it, it is meaningful and helpful. Peter, looking at all the, the characters that you do have, you have numerous of them, as I can see by all the boxes here. Um, which one is your favorite? You know, my favorite, it's like asking a parent who's got a lot of kids, which is your favorite kid. It's very, it's very dangerous in case they're all here. Obviously, Evita is my queen mother. She's the most famous, really, been around for a long time in everybody's lives. I don't really do much about her. I, I spend about 2% of my time on her because she has her own life. I've just got to diet for her. How's that for crazy? Um, I like very much her sister, Bambi Kellerman, who is quite an interesting creature, and she very much reflects a more dangerous uh, a blade um, of involvement with South African life. Uh, but there are so many... Uh, I'm fascinated by Julius Malema. I mean, he's, he's in a box here as well. I d I'm not packing him away. I don't think we've seen the, the last of him. I certainly hope not, because uh, he might not be everybody's cup of tea. But he does represent a huge amount of questions from youth that are not being given the attention they need. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very theatrical character. He certainly knows how to do it. Um, most of the stuff he said, 
unfortunately can't be taken as seriously as it should be. But then most of the stuff I say, don't I don't expect it to be taken seriously because it's meant to reach your ear uh, through your laugh glands. You know what I'm saying? Um, so uh, I, the most important thing, like with every baby in your life as a parent, you give that baby your full attention until it's sort of like old enough to smoke cigarettes, get in the car and drive away safely. Eyewitness News, in touch, in tune, and independent. For the latest, log on to ewn.co.za or ewn.mobi.